Hey, Brandy. Okay, I think you need to not stress so much about these. You're totally good. You'll be fine. It looks like it was tough. I mean, I know you said it was like 9 a.m., so it's it's bright, but it's doable. They're fine. And the light is nice and even on everybody's faces, so I'm not worried about it. I think you shouldn't be worried about it either. I'm just going to go ahead and do like um, like a basic edit on like one from each of these sets, and then... Um, then you'll have them to refer back to. So, okay. So first I'm going to just bring the exposure down, um, to try to make sure I can see the trees and stuff. And then I'm going to bring my highlights probably all the way down to honestly, well, maybe halfway for right now. First, let's pull up our shadows just to kind of even things out and pull down our contrast to even things a little bit. Um, and then let's go to the masks and um, we'll do the subject first. We'll see how this does. Not great. Okay. I wondered. There's just, um, I, it doesn't do super good when there's like a lot of trees and grass and stuff. Okay. So I'm just going to go in here and create a mask myself. I'm just going to do it rough at first. And then if I need to erase off, I can. Um, and then... So just working through this, um, I mean, we've kind of like talked through this, but I'm just doing it so that we can pop them out from the background and then we'll darken the background so that they, um, they stand out a little more from the background because it was so bright. It's going to be really helpful. Um, okay. There's just like a rough, a rough little mask. Okay, so we're going to brighten them up quite a lot. And as we brighten, um, we're going to be want, want to be adding a lot of contrast because they'll start to look washed out. The more that we like pull things up, the more washed out they're going to look. Um, I'm definitely going to want them a little bit warmer and we're going to want some dehaze on them that hazy, that washed out look is going to happen. We, can, I mean, we can undo some of that washed out look with the dehaze and we can brighten them more. And I'm just going to keep working on it. Just like kind of easing our way into this, um, like brightness, I guess. Um, okay. That looks pretty good for a start. Um, I'm just going to straighten this a little bit. I think they're about straight. It looks like from the trees, they were probably on a little bit of a hill. Um, need to kind of center things. That's good. I think you did a good job putting the white, the kit, people in white shirts behind the darkest tree, because if they had been um, with the lighter trees, they would have blended in a little bit more, I think. So that was good. Cause that, I mean, yeah because they're bright, they're going to be the brightest because they're white. So anywhere where it was like brighter would have been harder to compensate for everything else. Okay. Um, my guess is that selecting the background is going to, yeah. So I'm going to have to erase off of them. And again, I'm just going to do this rough. Like you're probably going to want to do this a little bit more detailed, but I'm just going to do it just kind of a rough erase. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. And then, well, okay. And then we'll work on this one. So I'm going to pull my highlights down a little. And let's bring up the dehaze to add some brightness or some contrast and stuff to the background. I'm going to bring the shadows down and blacks down just a little. Never mind on the blacks. Let's just not do that. Okay. Um, okay. I'm going to, I didn't adjust for the white balance. I'm going to warm everything up a little bit. Um, obviously like 
all of this haziness behind their heads is just because they haven't been really careful with the mask. Um, so you don't need to, like, it'll look better when, when you do this for real. Um, so I had it nice and dark to begin with so that I could kind of work on it. Now I'm going to brighten them up a little bit. And then if I decide I want the background to still be darker, um, I'll just go to the background mask to darken it up. So maybe something like this. And then with these guys, um, it's always a pain when people just do like that decide that they're going to wear straight white shirts. Like a little white is good, but it like they're glowing compared to everybody else. <laughs> ah, it's the worst. How could you have known though, that that's what they were going to tell everybody to wear? Um, okay. So I'm kind of focusing on everybody else because we're looking a bit hazy over here. Um, So that looks better for these guys. And then what I would probably do since they, these other ones are a little bright, I'm just going to do the minus brush at a really low, the flow is like the percentage or whatever that it's going. And I'm just going to like softly brush off them a little bit so they're not quite so bold. And these guys specifically are throwing me off. Um, and you can keep like adjusting that. It's like bugging me that there's like that haloing behind them because it will look a lot better when there's not. Hold on. I'll just kind of show you. I won't, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but to give you an idea of what it is going to look like. Um, another thing you can do with your subjects while I'm, I'm just going to talk while I'm working on this so you can see it. Um, you could also go in and um, do like the sharpening brush just on them. And that would be really helpful too, to help them pop out. Okay. So... I don't know. Sometimes I have to be able to like really visually see what's it's going to like a final product's going to look like. But do you see how right there I cleared up some of that haloing and it looks a lot better, right? Um you might want to do just a separate mask on these guys honestly from everybody else. That's probably what I would do to be honest with you. It's just their coloring is going to be so different because they're so much brighter than everyone else that it honestly might be easiest to just work on it that way. Um, that way you can continue to work on like making sure you've got everybody in here nice and bright. You could also use like highlights to brighten them up a little bit if you wanted to um, pulling the highlight slider up instead of down because you're not having to like get rid of all of their brightness and um, you could pull up shadows a little bit and then just bring the blacks back down to make sure you're compensating for pulling out color and stuff um because i would probably push them pretty far pretty like that and then maybe just take a second brush to these guys and Sorry, my little guy's getting trying to get in here. I don't know if you can hear him knocking. Dad's dad's making dinner while I work on this. Um, okay. So I'll just do this really quick. Your computer's probably gonna run slow doing edits like this. The more layers you add, the like slower it'll go. Okay. Um so I would do something 
like this and then just brighten them up separately to match since they're already going to be so bright. Um, oh, I think I increased the temperature on all of them. So that's part of it. Um, my computer's going slow trying to do all these masks and record this video. So sorry about that. Sorry. It's taking a minute. Um, yeah, but you can see already that's like starting to make them look more, um, cohesive, I guess. I don't think I got a, the mask very good on her face. This is not probably the one you're going to use with her anyway. So, all right. I'll just add more, maybe. Hmm. Maybe it was already on her. It's not doing a whole lot. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. Anyway, that is probably about what I would do on this. Um, do you see how there is just like a little bit of the purple stuff around them? Oh, it's not too bad. In the preview, you can kind of see it. If you've got that that happening, it's called, um, what is it called? I can't remember. Um, but you can defringe is what will fix that. So if you've got a little bit of that purple, yeah, see how it kind of got rid of a lot of it in the preview. Um, if there is some like purple from backlighting, that is how you get rid of that. Um, Okay. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the direction I would head. And then I just keep messing with it until you felt like really good about it, really positive about it. Um, some of these like brighter areas can be a bit distracting for sure. Um, so you could use a brush to do that, to fix that. Um, you could bring your luminance slider, the green one down, and that'll help soften and dampen the greens if you wanted to. Um, I would be, you know, I, I think we talked about this before, but you can kind of adjust your greens from there and things like that. So, um, like there's still more work to be done on this, especially for some reason the, these guys right here, the light is like kind of funny on them. So I'd keep reworking this and, and tighten up like the masks and things, but this is the direction I would go. I might like take it into Photoshop and get rid of these couple of leaves and then put like a sky overlay on it and maybe like do some dodging and burning to the background to like kind of even things out a little bit. Um, yeah. And keep working on this. Like it, it's not done for sure, but that is the direction that I would go on this. So like they're looking like a little too bright for the background so just keep like a, keep adjusting it to make sure that they look good you know but yeah that is what I would do for that first one um okay next one you can do I think these are all pretty much the same okay so for this one um I think this one's going to be a lot easier you've got a brighter image to begin with a little bit more shade. So I think this is going to go a lot faster. Um, so I think I told you, I, I like to get them kind of framed exactly how I want it with the cropping and all that first. And then I would probably warm this up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to bring the exposure down just a smidge um, to make sure I'm kind of getting all that detail, just kind of kind of setting the canvas up, um, shadows up, blacks down, and then let's add the subject mask. This one shouldn't have a problem catching pretty much everybody, which will be much easier. Perfect. Okay. So I'm just going to brighten first. And then add some blacks in there and then we're going to bring down the highlights to help with all this brightness. Yeah. That's the only place where they're blown out is pretty much. It's just them. Um, let me see. Oh yeah. So 
do you see it with me hovering over it? His head, his head, and his head, and his head were all, they all got missed. So you'd want to go back in there and, and adjust those to make sure everybody's the right color. Um, I'd probably do like a little bit of a dehaze on this one. And then probably warm them up a teeny bit. And maybe add a, I don't know. Sometimes they start to look magenta, so I'll add some green, but they are surrounded by green, so they really shouldn't look, it should look more green than anything. Okay, so I'm going to add the background here, and I'm going to darken that up, start with some dehaze. And bring the highlights down, probably not 100%, but down a little bit. And... So shadows up, whites up, and then blacks down just a smidge. And then I would look at color. Um, so we are getting a lot of like bright, bright yellows in the grass. Um, so if you want to kind of neutralize that, you can pull your yellow slider to the green side and that will turn all those yellows more green. Um, which is nice. You just need to watch, especially blonde hair, um, tends to have a lot of yellow in it. So if you're, if you're not careful, you can turn blonde hair. See, that's like before I use the slider and then this is after you can turn it a smidge green. Um, so that's kind of your call, how you want to handle that. Um, but making everything green and then just desaturating the greens ever so slightly so that they're not quite so neon is a really great way to to handle something like that where there's some bright light flowing through I do that all the time um and then you could even bring your green luminous slider down a little bit and maybe your orange slider up for faces because the only thing in this picture that's orange is the skin that looks really good um yeah so that's that, that's about what I would do, you know, keep adjusting, fix their heads, a couple little things like that. But this one's going to be, they're going to be so happy with this. They're going to really, really like this shot. Um, you, you could even, I don't recommend doing dodge and burn in Lightroom, but you can, it's just not as good, but you could definitely go into Photoshop. And so this is like a dodge brush. And just kind of like dodge some of these areas to add some depth right here where the trees are a little bit um, like lighter adding a little bit more depth up there will help a lot with um, well I don't want the aspen tree to be completely dark but it'll keep the keep the eye going to your subject um, this brightness doesn't bother me because it's not really competing with anything, but this right over their heads does compete with your, with what you're looking at. So I would just be a little careful of that. Um, yeah, we add a little more dehaze and a little more vibrance, you know, keep adjusting it until you feel like you really got something that you love. Um, but they're going to be super happy with this shot. They're going to love that. So that looks great. Um, and then is this okay this is a different spot oh this is pretty I like that I like the flare coming through but it's not on anybody's faces so that looks really good okay um so we're gonna bring highlights down your biggest challenge I'm guessing like before I've even played around with this I think the biggest challenge with this one is gonna be this bright spot right here so we'll just kind of start um Just kind of start getting like, you know, getting the canvas ready, basically. <laughs> we were painting. Um, get it set up here. Warm them up a little bit. Add a little bit of magenta to can balance out the green tones. Then we're going to work on the subjects. This is really cute. This is just the grandkids. That's a really fun shot. Just grandkids with grandma and grandpa. 
Um, this one is going to be a pretty easy edit too. And I'll show you what I would do for that bright spot so that it's not competing too much with everything else. Um, again, I think we've missed a few. Yeah, it didn't catch a lot of the boys' heads in the back. So I can just remind you how to do that. You just add the, do the plus brush, and then you just zoom into the ones that need it. Oops. And then just add the mask with, since it's on plus to, oh, maybe this is not just grandkids. These don't look like grandkids. I think you've just got everybody closer together than they were in the other ones. It seemed like less people for some reason. Um, yeah, so I'm just adding these ma the mask to them. I just, I go around, I mean, I'm using my pen I showed you, um, but I just don't quite go off of their hair. I'm trying to stay like on their faces, but not color it onto the background because then we start to get competing masks competing to do, to do two separate things where the background mask and the foreground mask are doing different jobs. Okay. That looks good. Um, did I get him? He's just darker than everybody else probably. Um, okay. That looks great. And then if we add the background, I love that you caught this like little scenic part back here in the background. That's so pretty. Okay, highlights down, exposure down, shadows down a little. I'm not going to take the highlights down too far because it's starting to look fake. Um, okay, and then again, because this is how the AI recognized it, you're going to have to mask off all those boys, right? So the minus brush off all their faces. Well, and even her. She... So you just want to make sure you're doing the minus brush to erase the background mask off their faces so that they are exposed the same as the other people. Oh, it like went all the way down here with her too. Oops. Okay. So I don't think I got everybody, but you get the idea. Um, okay. So what I would do here with this is first I would probably just do a brush um, or even like a radial gradient would be good here. Um, we just did something like this. I've got it. I'm just going to keep the feather at about 50% right now and then just bring it down. So the goal is to try to match like obviously the light is different, but we're just trying to get it a little bit closer to these other um, more shaded weeds. So I'm bringing the exposure down, highlights down a little, shadows down some, and then we're going to bring in some blues because there's a lot of yellow because of the light casting on it. So by bringing in more of the blue and taking out more of the yellow, we're kind of matching the colors more and then it's doing less of a comparison. Uh, like we're doing less visually comparing this part to the other parts. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, and I might not want it to feather. Oh, this is a cool new feature. I don't remember if I should do this. I think I did. Um, this will take your edits, but then like increase them. So you can do the edits, but to like 200%. So you, that's kind of nice too. If you're like, Oh, I've got it, but I want it a little further. See, I'm, I'm liking that a lot. I feel like that looks really good. Um, and even just that adjustment. So this to this definitely takes our attention to like the people and you might want to like adjust more if, if it feels like you want more contrast or like the highlights are too muted or something like that. No big deal. You can totally adjust for that. Um, the other thing that I would probably do because you do have this light flare, sometimes people don't really know what to do with this. I would be tempted to take this into Lightroom and just add like a sun flare overlay, like 
either like right here in the trees, like it's like it's coming through the leaves or up here. Uh, I, I'll just show you. I'm like describing it, but I could just do it for you and show you what it looks like. Hold on. Oh, it's called opening up Photoshop beta. Have you played with this new beta version? I can't remember if we talked about this or not. It's pretty cool. It really does do some impressive stuff. Um, I've been messing around with it, but now it's going to go slower even. Hang on. Okay. So, um, I mean, we could try. No, I'm going <laughs> to. The new AI features. I don't feel like I'm like confident enough with them to use them for like a tutorial like this. I need to work on them. I need to practice with them more. But just grabbing like a, a sun flare overlay. I think I told you I got these on I get these on Etsy or places like that. Um and you're just gonna drag it onto the picture and then resize it. Where are my layers? Okay. Um, then I'm just going to go to screen. So I clicked on this drop down menu and I'm going to pick screen and then, oh, why is it not letting me make it smaller? Gosh, I need to just have this in <sighs> the regular Photoshop or uncomfortable. Um, okay. So you could put it like something like this. Um, where it's like, you know, cause then it kind of, it gives people who are not photographers and not familiar with, you know, all the things and how light works really, it gives an explanation for why this is more hazy. Um, so you could put it up here and I would maybe probably be tempted to put it up here. So it just. It's just like, oh yeah, there's a little bit of sun flare popping out right there. That makes sense. I'm seeing like light on the ground. And yes, of course the sun was right there. That totally makes sense. Anyway, um, if you do that and then you want to take it back to Lightroom, you just do control shift E and then control shift S, which will save it. I'm annoyed that it's opening the new version. And then I'll just... Save it to the folder that's open in Lightroom. And as soon as that's done saving, I can't tell if it's done or not. Okay, here we go. Um, then we'll go back to Lightroom here. And there it is. So I would probably do something like that just to help give them like a a visual explanation of why, why there is sun haze there because they can't see the sun. Otherwise you could also do like a blue sky overlay just right there in, in Photoshop. We talked about that last time, but I would probably just, um, like remove some of these smaller leaves on the edges so that it's a little smoother. But if you wanted to add like a little bit more color or something, you could do a sky overlay, but you definitely don't have to. Um, but I, I think this is a great shot. They're going to be super happy with this. Oh, now I'm, I think it is a grandkid shot. It's just her. She doesn't look like a grandkid, but I'm, I'm thinking they are. Okay. Moving on. And then this one, I think is just the grandkids without grandma and grandpa. Right. Um, cute. This one, I think is going to be an easy edit for you. This, the light's good. It's like, yeah, this is an easy edit. Brighten it up a little bit. So I can see what I'm doing. Bring the highlights down a little. Add some warmth. Um, fix the tint a little bit. And then add, select the subject. Good. Okay, we'll brighten them. Oops. Highlights down, shadows up, whites up, but not that much. And blacks down. I think 
that's too much for black. Um, okay, and then select the background and just darken it a little bit. Bring my exposure down a smidge. Highlights down, shadows down. Okay. Yeah. Um, something like that. I'm going to go back to these guys because I feel like, I don't know. These ones are a little dark. Again, it's so hard when they wear clothes that are this contrasted. They did not make your job easy with this clothing choice. But um, I would continue to kind of adjust, fix the faces that got missed by the mask, stuff like that. But this is pretty much what I would do for them. Um, there is like a bit of green color cast, so you could definitely adjust the greens. You could either adjust greens to more yellow or... Um, make them a little more green and then just adjust here, add some magenta, which will just like kind of get rid of the green out of just your subjects, which would be good. Um, yeah, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> the mask is not on these three and it's bugging me, but that is what I would do. I think that looks really good and, and you could continue to adjust if you wanted to, but they're going to be super happy with that shot. These look great. I honestly, you're stressing for no reason because I think these all look really good. They're going to be happy with them. They turned out nice. It's going to be a little extra work with like the yucky lighting conditions, but it's not like, this is not like noon lighting. Like this is still like decent. You did a great job. I, I wouldn't have shot it any differently. So, okay. Let me know if you have any other questions.